distorted. Same way, kid. And I've seen him over a hundred times. Why don't you come with me? Come on. Hey, Mike. Yeah? Why don't you see if you can't find this young man's family? Keep it moving, Mike. These people should have been out of here 15 minutes ago. Yes, sir. Fire Team 1, talk to me. We're almost there, Captain. Ought to be cutting a line within a minute or two. Copy. Keep me posted. Fireman Crandall, you just mentioned cutting a line. What exactly does that involve? Well, basically, we're going to cut a two or three foot wide path through all this combustible brush. And try and remove as much fuel as possible from the fire's path. And roughly, how long will that take you and your men to do? <clears throat> oh, sorry, I forgot. No worries, I'm used to it. <laughs> uh, the answer to your question is we'll be up here a good while. So, uh... Oh, Kristen. Uh, Firefighter Scott. Firefighter Scott, what's it like being the only woman in with all these men? I don't know, kind of like having a bunch of big brothers, I guess. Seems like a pretty rough bunch. What's it take to earn their respect? Oh. 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 Sorry. <laughs> no problem, lady, any time. I'll get you next time, Tits. You were asking about respect? Let's go, people, move, 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 move! big one in before you call it quits. Yeah, lucky me. I just got word the fire's jumped over Route 62. Deer Lake's completely cut out. Yeah, and that's not good. It's a pretty big sized town. Well, how fast do you but think? I can't get my people there in time. They got it up on their hands right here. Without the main road in, the only way to get people on the ground fast is pretty obvious. All right. stays on our side, I'd say we'll have it wrapped up here hopefully before it gets dark. Is that gonna be 
be a water drop or flame retardant. Neither. The smoke jumpers. Smoke jumpers, they're the most elite firefighters there are, right? So they say. Excuse me. Fireman Crandall? Okay, Pat. What was that all about? Well, Crandall cut out for the smoke jumpers a few years back. Long before your time, Princess. I didn't know that. In case you didn't notice, he doesn't like to talk about it. Why didn't he make it? He says he quit. Yeah, that's not what I heard. Either way, he didn't cut it. Winds have definitely changed the direction of down slope, sir. We're gonna need to fall back until we get a water drop up here. Roger that. Fall back, fall back. I'll call for air support. Okay, folks, move out. Wait, where are the reporters? Damn it, Josh! Don't! Damn it, Josh, me! Would you just go and get a fireman, please? Fine, I'll be back as soon as I can! Sometime today would be a plot! Look, Scott, they could be anywhere. We should at least try. What are you trying to prove, Scott? They're as brave as your old man? We're getting circled, we're all dead. Fine, take the men down then and leave me here. I'll look for them myself. You know as well as I do, if I go down there without you, you'll skin me alive. Yeah, well, I guess you have a problem on your hands then, don't you, Crandall? Man out! Five minutes, that's it. Repelling? No. You're roped down the woman off the leg. Don't you think it's a better idea if you do that since I've never done it before? You're about what? 120? 123? I'm 185. Oh. I get your point. Cutter, there she is. Just get her over. Get her over. All right. Let me know when you need the slack, okay? Okay. All right. One foot behind the other. Small steps. All right. There you go. Smoke inhalation. Pulse is erratic. We gotta get it down the mountain right now. Stonic unit CQ. Cap, we need transport up here right away. We got a medical emergency. We also need EMS standing by. Roger that. EMS will be standing by. Copy. Call Scott. Tell her five minutes are up. Scott, do you copy? Scott, this is Donahue. Do you copy? There you go. Whoa! You okay? Got good. Nice. Good job. Scott, do you copy? Get her. Guy. You guys drop her off and come right on back up. You're staying. 
Well, these flames will be a lot easier to face than the captain if I show up down there without it. Go on. Congratulations, Dad. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. People keep saying congratulations. I've done what I love doing my entire life. It's not like there's a big trick to it. Or another way to look at it is that maybe that is the biggest trick of all. Chrissy, make sure your father doesn't go stealing these before the guests arrive, OK? I'll keep my eye on him. All right. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That is one beautiful woman that she's put up with so much over the years. I am a very lucky guy, I tell you that. <clears throat> yeah. Speaking of luck, I want you to know I was real proud of you the other night. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, I'm not very good with words, but, well, well, I've been meaning to tell you. We're here. Hi, Dad. Hey, Charles. Hi, Hey, Meredith, look at you. <laughs> How are you? Look at you. I think you've grown since I saw you last week. <laughs> now look at this. Come here. Oh, look at you drinking beer. Too you worried you're going to get fat? <laughs> Just kidding. You've always been skinny. Anyway, Dad? Yep? This is for you. Happy oh, retirement. Thank you. <laughs> Bet you can't guess what it is. Um, uh, uh, go ahead and open it. Dan picked it out. He said it's the best. It got all the top reviews. Where is Dan? Shouldn't we wait for him? Oh, no, no. Go ahead. He's going to be a little late. His boss wanted to take some clients fly fishing, and Dan had to fly him to catch him in the last minute. Whoa. Wow. 25 years old? That's why we bought it, because that's how long you've been a fireman. Oh. So. Must have cost at least a hundred bucks. Oh, never mind the cost. I told Dan, I said, nothing is too good for my dad, especially on his retirement. That's true, but it's 26 years, right, Dad? Yeah, well, yeah. So... No, that's right. I stand corrected. He stayed on an extra year to watch over my baby sister here. Is he the greatest dad in the world or what? Huh? Thank you. I love you so much, Dad. Well, I love you, too. Oh. <laughs> So, what do you think? Oh, what do you think, Meredith? It's the coolest house ever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
I hate to take off early, but I gotta get Sleeping Beauty home to bed. Okay, thanks for coming, Dan, and thanks for the scotch. You didn't need it to do that. Hey, no problem. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. Chelsea's gonna stick around and help Barbara clean up. Okay, so I'll see you Sunday. You will. Okay. Good night. Hello, old timer. Hey, buddy. You made it. You think I missed this? <laughs> Beer? Sure. She always wanted to be one of the boys. I remember one time she came home and she was crying because they wouldn't let her play with them. What are you talking about? I don't remember that. Oh, I do. And one day I tried to be Miss Helpful and I suggested that she ask if she could play the nurse. It's a perfectly reasonable idea. And mom, do you remember what she did instead? Oh, I'm gonna claim Alzheimer's and sit this one out. Thank you. So you got a brand new house and you've already got an addition. <laughs> yeah, as for Meredith, Barbara and I are gonna sit out here and just watch our granddaughter play. Well, well, now that would be the good life that you're looking forward to. Well, it's gonna be different, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you this, it's not gonna be the same without you, my friend. Thanks, buddy. The great mountains with her lover, right? With two yoke of oxen and a big yellow dog. Really, Dad? You know, I haven't done this in a long time. It's kind of therapeutic, actually. What are you doing here? I'm working. What the city pays me for. As of today, I'm still officially on the payroll, you know. You're not supposed to come in on your last day. You know that. It's bad luck. No, oh, I don't believe that crap. And if I stayed home, I think I'd drive your mother crazy. Yeah, well, she's going to have to get used to it. You're retiring. Today. Now go home, will you? I just got lucky. Dad. Trust me now. You're going to be running things from out here from now on, so you might as well get used to it. Sure you want to do this, Dad? Oh, are you kidding me? I haven't done this since I made Captain.
Barb, please, if there's anything we can do, let us know. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. I'd rather just get them done now, you know. It was a nice funeral, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, all those people, firemen from all over the state, most of them didn't even know him. Now, well, Daddy was a hero, and everyone wants to pay their respects to him. <laughs> Mommy says Grandpa's in heaven. She's right, sweetheart, he is. Do they have fires there? Uh, no. No, I think that's the other place. Although, maybe they'll make an exception for Grandpa, because he was so good at fighting them. Didn't you like Grandpa and Chrissy? Yes, of course I did. I loved him. I loved him very much, just like you love your daddy. Then how come you killed him? Why would you say that? That's what Mommy told Daddy in the car. That it was all your fault. How dare you? If you have something to say to me, you say it to my face. Kristen, what is going on? You told Dan that I killed Dad? That is not true. Yes, it is true, Kristen. Is that in your face enough for you? Listen to me, both of you. He stayed on the job an extra year because of you. He should be out there with Meredith, enjoying his retirement, not you. Please. Please, not today. This is not the time. Your father was a fireman. It was in his blood. He was doing what he loved, and it's as simple as that. No one is to blame. No, Mom. No. Chelsea!
need you to back me on this, Tim. Serious about that. I just don't think it's appropriate, okay? Appropriate? What's it? Don't bother coming back, Scott. What? I said, don't bother coming back. You ain't wanted around here. Well, that isn't really much of a change, is it, Crandall? I've known that since I got here a year ago. I'm staying, so you better get used to the idea. See you in two weeks. He was a good hand, Hank. One of the best. But he made a bad decision, and it cost him his life. Come on, Crandall, take it easy, okay? She's been through enough. I'm just saying, we'll see how long she lasts when he ain't around to pick up the slack for her. Hell of a lot longer than you lasted with the smoke jumpers. I guarantee that. What the hell did you say? I think you heard me. Well, you hear me now. Your daddy's dead because of who he picked to go in with, so he maybe wasn't so damn sick. Victor, Victor, calm down! Calm down! You, uh... You want to tell me what happened? It's all in the incident report. I know I read the report. I'm asking you to tell me in your own words. Look, Hank was a good friend of mine, OK? But I need my firefighters to fight fires and not each other. Now, the investigation and the temporary suspension, standard procedure. You'll be cleared as to your conduct in the house. You saved the child's life. And Hank knew the risk going into the house. We all do. But what happened this morning with Crandall is another story altogether. It won't happen again, sir. Oh, I know it won't happen again. Now, the boys' versions of what happened all match, all right? And I'm not hearing you contradicting any of it. <laughs> You know I can't show favoritism. You understand that, based on who your father was. I understand. Six weeks without pay, in addition to the two with. Six weeks? Some time off will do you good, all right? You shouldn't be working at a time like this anyway. You need some time. The guys need some time, you know, to get their confidence back in you. They never had any to begin with. Well, maybe not, but I have. And I still do. Dinner smells wonderful as usual, Barbara. Thanks, Dan. It's nice to have everybody here. So, Chris, what are you doing with your days? Oh, this and that. Keep them busy. You ever think about getting a new job? Why would I do that? I was just asking. I may not know a lot about firefighting, but in the real world, if you punch your boss in the face, it kind of limits your possibilities for advancement. OK, one, he wasn't the boss. And two, he had it coming for like a year. OK. Thought I'd ask. All right, Mary Bear. Let's go help Grandma set the table. We're playing a game. You can finish later. Come on. All right, helpers are here. She doesn't mean to be so hard on you, you know. She just wants what's best for me. I know, I know. Told me like a million times before. Yeah, I know, I know. The fact remains that she is your sister and she does love you. So how long until you're back on active duty? Over seven weeks. Hmm. What are you gonna do in the meantime? Through the winter, I'm good to jump next season. Excuse me.
Excuse me. Can I help you? Yes. I'd like to fill out an application, please. Well, we're not hiring secretaries right now. Sorry. <laughs> Is there a problem? No, I just can't believe you actually said that to me. Don't mind him. He says that to everybody who asks for one. Even the guys. Done any repelling lately? No, not really. That's too bad. You showed definite promise. Thanks. There's been a lot going on lately. Yeah, I heard about your dad. I'm sorry. I would have liked to make the funeral, but I had to fly out to Juno. Yeah, well, um, on your website, it says that you're taking applications. <clears throat> We're always on the lookout for qualified candidates. And that would not include you. Really? Why not? You don't meet the minimum physical requirements. Smoke jumpers need to be at least five feet, five inches tall. I'm 5'8". And 125 pounds, and it looks like you dropped a few since you told me you were 123. Haven't had much of an appetite lately. Well, I'd suggest you get one. Hit the gym some, then come back and we'll talk. But thanks for coming in. That is a blatantly sexist policy, and you know it. Excuse me? That rule is made for one reason and one reason only to exclude women. No. That rule is meant to exclude people who can't handle the physical demands of one of the hardest, most stressful jobs on the planet. I can do this job as well as any guy you've got. Prove it. <laughs> you got it. I can make more if you like. Mm. That's okay, no thanks. Mm. I'll make a couple more slices of bacon now. Certainly have your appetite back, I'll say that. Mm. Not pregnant, are you? Mom, please. <laughs> I'm not even seeing anyone. Oh, yeah? Well, apparently you don't even have to date anymore, what with this hooking up and so forth I hear about. You worry too much. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm a mother, I'm allowed. So, how do they compare with your father's? <laughs> I know. <laughs> no one's will ever be dads. So, Mom, I was thinking. Do you mind if I stay here with you for a few days? Of course not. You can stay as long as you like. Bet you're going crazy with nothing to do, huh? Can't wait to get back to work? I'm not going back to the firehouse. What? No one wants me back there, Mom. I'll never live down what happened. Oh. Kristen, you can win back the confidence of the men. It's just gonna take some time, that's all. I've seen the way they look at me, Mom. It's over. What are you gonna do? Know something, actually. But, um, difficult job to get. You've already told me I'm not qualified. Don't listen to them. What do they know? Get qualified. You can be whatever you want to be. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So what is it? What's the job? I want to join the smoke jumpers. <laughs> just excuse me. I, I, I'm just going to go get my heart medication now. Mom, I'm serious. Kristen. I spent 26 years every day a nervous wreck because my husband might die in a fire. And now my daughter tells me she's going to jump right into them out of an airplane. And you tell me I worry too much? Mom, please, you have oh. to listen to what... What if your parachute doesn't open? Of course, that's probably better than floating down into a burning tree. Honestly, I can't Mom. believe you're doing this to me. Mom. Unbelievable.
Sorry, I overreacted. And I meant what I said about you being able to be whatever you want to be. And if being a smoke jumper is what that is, then I support you. Even though it means more gray hairs. <laughs> Although I've already lost that battle, so who am I kidding? <laughs> You hung the moon, you know. He'd have been so proud of you for trying. And of course, he would have known exactly what to tell you to do to make sure you give yourself the best possible shot at it. Whether it's or firefighting. Honey, you would... I'll never be your daddy. But I think... Uh, I think I know what he might have told you to do. You seek the help of someone you trust. Actually, it's not sexist. It's bureaucracy. The government invented those uh, height and weight minimums to weed out the people that can't pass the uh, physical fitness minimum. There's a fitness minimum? Yeah, that's what they don't tell you. But it's pretty simple. You carry 100 pounds and one mile under 14 minutes. That doesn't sound so simple. But what you're telling me is that if I can pass the physical fitness minimum, they'll let me apply to be a smoke jumper? That's what I'm saying. So why didn't they just tell me that when I went in there? That is the sexist part. Sorry. become a smoke jumper, is it? You uh, run around with dog food sacks on your back? That's the idea. Uh-huh. Well, listen, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine. He flies for the jump school. He says you've been jumping three, four times a week. So? He said you're clear to jump solo now, so anytime you're interested, I'd be happy to. What are you doing right now? I can't believe I let you talk me into this. finds out I'm going to use the three words that old men live by. What are those? Deny, deny, deny. <laughs> so, Dan had to make another emergency run? Yeah. All the way down to Idaho Falls. I got the call and I was dropping there at school. It's so crazy. And the worst part is now he wants me to go and buy the camping gear for this camping trip we have planned this weekend, and I have no idea what to wait, get. Wait, wait, wait. Back up. Did you say camping trip? 
As in you? I know. <laughs> oh, I know, but Meredith's been talking about it and she's got him wrapped around her little finger, so I guess it's the great outdoors for moi. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> what are we gonna do with you two? Don't you get sick of fighting all the time? I don't know, I guess it's just always been that way. I see, well, you better tense up. We got three minutes to the jump zone. No, she seems pretty determined. And she is her father's daughter. And she sets her mind to something. <laughs> A smoke jumper, can you believe it? Maybe we can talk her out of it. <laughs> or maybe Dan can, she listens to Dan. God knows why. How do you say good luck in skydive ease? We tell an actor to break a leg, but I don't think that's appropriate in this situation. No, I don't think so. I'll just say my stupid luck, okay? All right, good luck it is. How do you go? I just don't understand her. I never have. Why can't she just do normal things like normal people? Well, I've tried everything. I mean, I've, I've tried setting her up with guys. Nice guys, Mom. Sweet guys. They're friends of Dan's. And she ends up challenging him to, like, arm wrestling matches and push-up competitions. <laughs> and she wins on that. <laughs> I know. That's the worst part. Oh. You know, I'm gonna call Dan right now and just plant the idea in his little head. Maybe he'll come up with something on the trip home. Dan Ladder. Oh, hi, I didn't think that you'd answer. Uh, hi, Chels. Uh... Listen, I hope I'm not bothering you, but I'm sitting here with mom. And... Actually, can I c call you right back? Dan, that was so good. Who was that? Uh, nobody. Well, that nobody had a woman's voice. What's going on, Dan? I'll explain it to you when I get back, Chelsea. No, you'll explain right now. Chelsea, relax. It's just me. Kristen? What are you doing with Dan? He's in Idaho Falls. Well, uh, well, what's going on? He took me skydiving, Chelsea. Can you give the phone to my soon-to-be ex-husband, please? Hi, honey. You lied. <sighs> well, I'm uh, glad you survived the jump, because now we're both dead. Look, Chelsea, I'm sorry. Okay, the whole thing was my idea. No, that's not the point. The point is, he is a full-grown man, and he chose to do this like a little boy by lying to me. I would have told you. Oh, when, Dan? Next week? Next year? I mean, I just want to know why you feel you had to do this behind my back. Because I wanted to help her. I wanted to show her some support, something that's in short supply from certain other members of this family. But why don't you show me some support, your own wife? I mean, I'm just trying to help her get another job so she doesn't kill herself like she... Like what? Like I killed Dad? No, I didn't say that. Yeah, but you were about to. All right, all right. Let's just all calm down. At least she's not lying out in the middle of the woods somewhere with her neck broken. You know what your problem really is? What? You're jealous of my relationship with Dad just like you always have been. Well, at least I didn't spend my whole life trying to replace Donnie in Dad's eyes. Chelsea! You think he somehow became the son that he lost? You didn't even come close. Be quiet, both of you! Don't you mention that subject in front of me again. If your father were here, he'd be 
He'd be so ashamed of the two of you. I know I am. Someone has to pick up Meredith. You think you can handle that? I believe I'll just call you Penny from now on, because you keep coming up like a bad one. Is that the best line you got? Must not get much business with that. Who says I was looking for business? I don't know. Guy walks over to a lady eating alone at a bar, tries to strike up a conversation. I figured you weren't coming over to bum some fries. <laughs> I wasn't, but that's not a bad idea. Thanks. Just jumped a big fire over near the state line. I'll tell you, a couple days up there, that hot sun gets to where all you're thinking about is a cold beer. Yeah, that's all? <laughs> Pretty much. It's like you're trying hard to put on those extra pounds. Not really. Giving up on the idea of applying. Probably wise. I didn't say I'd given up. Let's just say I got enlightened. Enlightened? Yeah, you see, I talked to somebody who's in a position to know these things. He says that, uh, legally speaking, you can't keep me from applying because of my height, my weight, or my lack of either. I've been training for the last six weeks now. I can pass the physical test. I know it. Really? You can carry 100 pounds for a mile in under 11 minutes. 11? I thought it was 14. You thought wrong. Why is it so important for you to be a smoke jumper? Everyone knows you're a good firefighter, so what are you trying to prove? Good isn't good enough. I want to be the best. And smoke jumpers are the best. So you guys can laugh, and you can make jokes, and you can make me carry a 100-pound pack all day long if you want, but I'm not giving up. Ever. OK. Good. That attitude will go a long way when you report the training Monday. Wait, does that mean I'm in? Means you got your chance. Thank you. No need to thank me. If you knew what was in store, you wouldn't. Yes. Damn it, Ray. <laughs> you told her what? Sean, relax. I had no choice. Somebody wised her up. I don't know how, but she knew. Well, who the hell did a damn fool thing like that? I don't know. She said something like legally speaking or whatever. She might have gone and got herself a lawyer for all we know. <laughs> hey, put it back. No. Come on. Sean, just relax. I am relaxed. No, you're not. I am. Listen to me. Maybe it's for the best. The best? How many beers did you have over there, No, 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 no. Just hear me out, Sean. Let's say we try and keep her out, and she does have herself a lawyer, or worse. She goes and gets a damn press in on this thing. We get hit with sex discrimination. All that nonsense. I mean, just take a look around here. There's not one single woman on the payroll. Even if it ain't true, we discriminate. It's the appearance. That's all the media goes on. So you think we should just let her in? Well, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, come on, Ray. She wouldn't stand a chance. You know that. You see, that's the beauty of it. She'll fail in her terms. We'll be off the hook. You're about to embark on the toughest two weeks of your lives. 90% of you ladies, no offense, will not even make it through basic training. Only the strongest of you are going to make it. And seeing as most of you look like you come from the shallow end of the gene pool, I don't think that's gonna be very many. You will follow orders correctly the first time. If you're fighting a fire and you do not follow orders, someone could die. We're going to begin a series of tests to determine whether or not you meet the minimum physical fitness standards required to even begin smoke jumper training. If any one of you is unable to complete any one of these tests, you're going home. Give me 25 push-ups. As smoke jumpers, we accept the fact that there is a certain amount of risk inherent in doing our job. But 
willingness to accept risk is not the same as being reckless. I want to be very clear on that. Seven pull-ups, just like this. One of the greatest dangers we face when on the ground is the blow-up. Hey, you're Kristen Scott. Go! Faster, go! Yeah, why? The trees themselves can actually explode. Go, let's go, let's go! Sure they bent the rules to let you in. We are paratroopers fighting a different enemy. Just so you know, it's not sitting well with some of the guys. Move it! Come on, you guys! Don't worry, it's okay by me. Move, you guys, move! Yeah, thanks, I feel a lot better. Sometimes a solution that seems insane can save your life. Keep moving, you guys, face yourselves apart a little further than that, and go! 1949, 13 smoke jumpers were caught in a blow-up in McKenna. One man did survive. He knew that he and his men couldn't outrun that fire, so he had to think fast. He realized that the only thing that wouldn't burn was what was burned already. So he took a match, and he lit the grass that he was standing in on fire. And so he stood there in the middle of that circle of fire, yelling for his men to come join him. But they all thought he was crazy. And one by one, that fire caught them. And last but not least, the one mile run with a 100 pound pack on your back. One mile down that road is a marker. If you are not there within 11 minutes, you're going home. Ten fifty-eight. You made it for today. This marks the end of the first week. And I gotta say, those of you that are left are the sorriest group of rookies I have ever seen. You're gonna have to step it up if you wanna make it. Today's challenge is an individual one. Those of you with the five fastest times will get the weekend off. You can go home. You can see your mummies. And those of you with the five slowest times, you will stay here, and you will clean every last piece of dirt out of this camp. Line up, single file. You heard him, line up, single file, now! Ladies first, Scott.
Carlos Scott. Send a woman to Shut up. Man. What just happened is completely unacceptable. And one of you will no longer become a smoke jumper. Because as of right now, you're dismissed. Pack your bags, Selbark. You're going home. What? I Me? advise you to quit while you're ahead. But sir, I wasn't. I saw what you did. Get out of here. As for the rest of you, grab your mops. Nobody's going anywhere this weekend. No. Not you, Scott. Take the weekend off. But, sir, I can Scott, also help. Scott, that's an order. Yes, sir. Scott. Sir. Were you this much trouble back in Rawlings? Oh, no, sir. Much more. Don't say it, Ray. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. out here. Honey, can't you leave that thing alone for like five minutes? We're supposed to be getting away from it all. I'm just calling mom to let her know that we're staying at the scenic Willow Glen campground. You know how she worries. Damn it! Well, we can always sleep in the van. It's fine. It's just been a while, that's all. Do you want the instructions? I guess not. Hey, Mary Bear, don't go far, honey. It's getting late. OK, Mommy. Okay. Uh, good evening, folks. I'm just here to collect the site fee. That's uh, $15 for the one vehicle. You uh, look like you're having a little trouble there, sir. Can I give you a hand? I'm fine, thanks. All right, listen, you folks, you just enjoy the outdoors, and uh, be sure to drown your campfire real well. It's already pretty dry this year. Thank you, Ranger. What'd I do now? Uh, nothing. I was, um, wondering if I could take you to dinner. Like, dinner dinner? Or, like, dinner as in? Yeah, that, the second one. It's, um, not make a big deal of it, okay? What can I change first? Of course. Do you want to come in? No. <laughs> How long could it possibly take? Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, thanks. What's this I hear about a train derailment? Happened an hour ago up in the National Forest. Right. About 10 miles outside of Stevensburg. Okay. Yeah, a couple tanker cars exploded, debris scattered over a wide area. Air attacks hitting the crash site pretty hard, but they can't keep up with the spot fires. Well, we ought to be able to deal with a couple of spot fires. We better, because if the wind picks up and this thing torches off, we can have a clear shot from the state highway to Stevensburg. 
Nothing but dry fuel to eat up on the way. Don't worry. We'll knock it down. Be safe. Always. Someone's gonna do it for me. Technically, stretching the rules a little as it is. Well then, I may have to report you. You take bribes. We're still an hour from the drop zone. What do you got for me? The jet stream above the fire zone has dropped below the inversion cap. That puts a chance of a blow up at over 70%. Well, one thing I know for sure, there's a 100% chance of this fire taking out Stevensburg if we don't catch it and fast. <laughs> advisory says we have wind gusts of up to 45 miles an hour. If you guys manage to land anywhere near each other, it'll be a miracle. Yeah, well, I believe in miracles, Crawford. You got to in this business. Well, I don't have the authority to abort, but that's my recommendation. Yeah, the boss, it's your call. I've never been one to get all dressed up and skip the party. I'll talk to you on the ground, Crawford. Roger that. The girl's gonna put a dress on for you. The least you can do is ask her to dance. Mm, well, your wish is my command. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your deal, Ray? Why are you a smoke jumper? Kind of runs in the family, I guess. My grandfather was one of the original smoke jumpers. Do you believe that? Really? Yeah. My dad felt he couldn't live up to his old man, though, so he moved us here. He's got a ranch down in Idaho Falls. Oh. How about you? Do you live here in Rawlings all your life? Yep. Born and raised. Brothers, sisters? A sister. Um, I had a brother, Donnie. He died when I was little. He drowned. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. I never really knew him. But Chelsea did. She says he loved baseball. And so you grew up trying to pinch hit for him? <sighs> wow. I wanted to rip my sister's head off last week for saying that. But I guess if I'm honest with myself, there is some truth to it. Or there was. Mm. Who knows anymore? You know, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. You're as tough as any guy I've ever seen come through there. I mean it. Oh. Not physically, mind <laughs> you, but where it counts. Right here. I do, I mean that. <laughs> yeah, me too. I heard you're not above punching your superior officers. Ray Kilhannock. I'm on my way. What is it? I'm gonna have to take a rain check on dinner. I just got bumped to full standby. Oh, wow, my place is on the way. I'll drop you off. If I change in two seconds, can I go with you? You got it, Penny. About the rest of the team are you telling me nobody's checked in that's what i'm trying to tell you ray what's she doing here she's a rookie rookies need to know how the ground support team works too hey train derailed here fire's moving north up antelope valley a little less than one mile an hour that's three or four times faster than the average forest fire right somebody's been paying attention in class i see 
Lookout Tower 6 reporting wind gusts of 75 miles an hour. Milligan jumped in conditions like that? How the hell did he keep from getting spread out? He didn't. North! Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Where's Milligan? Man, your guess is as good as mine. You can see most of Milligan's men are regrouping back over here. And that one down there? Who's that? That's Milligan. Mm. When was the last time you tried him? I tried him every five minutes. Well, I think you should try him again, Crawford. Rawlings dispatch to Milligan. Do you copy? Dispatch to Milligan. Roll to Milligan. Dispatch to Milligan. Milligan, do you copy? Dispatch, go for Milligan. Milligan, thank God. We'll put him on speakerphone. My God, Milligan, what's your status? Well, I've been better. I got myself in a bit of a pickle here. I'm up on a cliff. At least 200 feet high, arms busted, a couple of ribs too. Do you have a visual on your crew? I show them a half a click from your position. Negative. I can't see him, I can't see anything, I don't know. Hold on, Crawford, I see him, I see him. Norris! Norris! Norris, do you copy? Come in, Norris. Dispatch. Copy is negative. Copy is negative. Please repeat, over. What's he saying? I don't know, I don't know. It's all distorted. Norris, you gotta turn around. Norris, it's Milligan, turn around! Crawford, I can't get through. They can't hear me. Try the alternate channel. Get the hell out of here Okay, that's good. I'll let him know right away. Jump 19's already refueled. We can be wheels You're up. You gotta stay put for now. What are you talking about? You gotta send me and the boys in now. I can't. Yes, you can, Crawford. You give the orders. We're in the air. That's how it works. I said I can't. You can't or you won't. Hey, whatever works best for you, Ray, the result's the same. This fire has to be stopped. You're right, it does. But I'm not gonna throw away another six men's life to do it. I warned Milligan against the wind. Those men are not coming back because he made a bad decision. And until that plane is in the air, that decision is mine. And my decision is to stand down. And until I am absolutely certain that they have a fighting chance, nobody is going back in there. Now, have I made myself clear? Yeah. He's right. You know that. Sure, I'm glad I cut you a break and let you in here, Penny. You know what? You didn't cut me any breaks, Ray. I worked my butt off to get in here. Well, we'll see what happens next week, won't we? Is it the fact that I'm agreeing with him that pisses you off? 
All he's trying to do is minimize the danger. We're smoke jumpers. Danger comes with the job. And who was it that said that just because smoke jumpers take risks doesn't mean that they're reckless? Those men were my friends. And what you're proposing isn't going to bring any of them back, Ray. Mommy? Yes, we. I have to go party again. No, of course you do, baby. All right, let's go. <sighs> Meredith, honey, that's the second time. Why did you think you had to go? Well, I had to go then, but now I just guess I don't have to go. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. Next time, make sure you have to go before you wake me up, okay? Okay. okay. Here, let me get that. <laughs> Let's go to bed, sweetie. Down. Down, honey. I smell smoke. Okay. No, but I'm worried. Honey, it's a campground. They have campfires. It was 4.30. They've been out for hours. They smolder all night. Trust me, honey, that's all it is. Now, unless the tent is actually on fire, I'm going to go back to sleep. Station one, Crandall here. Evacuations have now started with yes, sir. That was the chief. Time to do our part. We're going to Stevensburg. Oh, boy, I love camping. Whose idea was this anyway? Why is it so smoky? Because there's a big fire, honey. They said we have to leave. I tried to tell your dad last night, but he wouldn't listen to me. Just a second, Meredith. But, Mom, Meredith, yeah. listen to me. We have to pack up as quickly as possible. We'll be with you in a second, OK? Dan, did you get the tent? I got it. I, we gotta leave her I thought you were watching, watching her. her. I thought packing. you were watching her. Meredith! I was packing. Meredith! Meredith! Sorry. Meredith, she Meredith! can't be she can't be far. She can't be far. Meredith! Meredith! Billy! 
Milligan! Milligan! I think he's in shock. How are we gonna get him down? Never done any repelling? sister have a lot more in common than you think. Hey, what are you folks still doing here? You should be down the road about a... Whoa! What happened? It was already like that. <laughs> All right, I'll rope down to him. You'll belay. The dicey part's gonna be cutting him out of the harness. So why don't we just pull him up by his shoe lines? You want to risk getting tangled up and pulled down with him? Be my guest. One rope each. All right, the fire's jumped the highway, so we got to use the old logging road to get out. But I got to warn you, it gets a little hairy out near the exit. Define hairy. Well, you might want to have the little one close her eyes. And maybe her, too. trouble, sir. You got a problem with that? No. Just hope you're not the type that holds a grudge. Uh, oh, you'll know in a minute, won't you? Yeah. Scott. Thanks. Anytime, sir. All right, pull him up!
I got a serious problem here. Dispatch, go for Kohanic. We have a situation. There's campers trapped at Willow Glen Campground on the old logging road. You get some of your crew over there as soon as possible. Over and out. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. We can't spare any men. We're stretched too thin as it is. Well, Barbara, calm down. I mean, the chances are they've already been evacuated by now. Well, what about Kristen? They said on the news that the smoke jumpers are just. Barbara. Listen, first of all, Kristen's a rookie. I cannot imagine them letting her jump fire with, what, what, one week of training? Look, is there any way I could find out for sure? Is there anyone I could talk to? Kristen Scott, yeah, I know who she is. She ain't here at the moment, and, uh, in the middle of a big fire map, so if you don't mind. Well, listen, I, I, I just need to know something, all right? You don't let rookies jump, is that right? Not normally, no, but uh, she just jumped the Stevensburg fire, if that's what you're asking. Ma'am? Uh, you there? Yeah. Uh, look, uh, could I just ask you one more thing? Yeah, if, if it's quick, ma'am. I gotta go. Do you know anything about the National Park? My other daughter is... Uh, I'd have to direct you to the park service on that, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, thanks. No problem. Jeez Louise, what the hell's this place coming to? I got mommies calling me here now. Hey! Oh, God, am I glad to see you. I got a serious problem. I got a family trapped up there behind that log. Good luck. Oh my god. Chelsea. Scott for dispatch. Dispatch, go for Crawford. Crawford, I need an air attack ASAP at the Willow Glen campgrounds on the old logging road. The tankers are all on the main line, Scott. I got one heli tack chopper I can give you. ETA? 10, 15 max. Just went back to Lake Adams to top up. 10 minutes ain't gonna cut it, Crawford. Damn straight ain't gonna cut it.
all squared away, Chief. That fire's gonna die here if we have anything to say about it. Good job, Crandall. Your men can relax now. I just got word from the fire line. Smoke jumpers are reporting 90% containment. 